In the business sector, close to 80% of the people in the private sector and the government sector, they are using computers daily. This is uh, another thing that uh, we are trying to create a liberalization in the telecom industry, which we have done successful in the past uh, four years. And that is why the growth of the internet penetration from 2006 to 2011 has grown uh, exponentially. We have uh, created a new policy starting in 2007 where we have opened up uh, new colleges, new universities. We created one new university in Ohrid called uh, San um, Apostol Paul, which uh, was started two years ago. And it's an uh, elite university where only 60 to 80 students per year can sign up on five ICT colleges. Okay. This should be they should grow in a state-of-the-art university where really only the best students from uh, Macedonia and the surrounding countries. And now we even give scholarships to some uh, African students and Asian students to come in and study over there, where the professors are also from abroad. Close to 50% of the professors are from abroad, brought in just to teach the students from uh, in this university. But uh, the competitiveness that uh, creates uh, this small economy in Macedonia, it has advantages uh, because uh, there is a government which has a Ministry of Information Society where in the past uh, three or four years we have been really a market leader in the region by creating projects where the private sector will be able to implement them. And once they implement a project for the governments, of course, they get a reference for that. Mm -hmm. And then they can um, go abroad, use that reference to create similar projects for other countries. Of course, we're always looking for companies to come in and start the manufacturing or move their headquarters in Macedonia. One thing that um, is uh, always a discussion when they come up, and usually there are two models that they will do. Either do a greenfield or they do a brownfield investment. Sometimes when they're looking uh, in a brownfield, they uh, would like to purchase a small IT company which already has a presence, they understand the culture, they understand the market in Macedonia, and they understand the region. But there are also times when they just come in, make a decision that they will start a company in Macedonia and work from here trying to tackle the markets uh, around the globe from Macedonia. We as a government uh, have a lot of advantages from the countries around the region and even some countries in Europe where we have the flat tax, we have a flat corporate tax. If they're developing a manufacturing plant in the free economic zones, they have even greater benefits over there where the government can um, be compensating 50% of their investment regardless if it, that's uh, in a building or water connecting to sewer, benefits for the employees and that's um, all that's a package which is all uh, in a law. And everybody can see that. And from what we understand is that Macedonia is one of the most competitive at the moment. And that is why doing business, uh, just uh, the report that came from 2011, we were top third reformer. And uh, we are ranked uh, the top 30 countries in the world. There are companies that are true home-based companies, and there are companies that uh, acquired okay. the company. Example, the um, true success story is the Sivas at the moment. Sivas. Sivas. Sivas has over 400, maybe to 500 employees, depends on the time. They have uh, offices in many more countries. And their headquarters are based in Macedonia. They are also success stories for smaller companies. Maybe they're not that well known, but they have a niche market um, in the film industry. That's uh, FX3X, which okay. are also working with DreamWorks in Hollywood. We have companies that uh, were started in Macedonia, Pexim, and then there was, it was sold to Aseco. That is a, another successful story. And then we have companies that um, came from the region and they opened up uh, shops in Macedonia and now they're working from Macedonia. So there are different success stories. Overall, what we can see is that uh, the continuation of the growth of the ICT sector is there. We determined that uh, Next year and the year after that, uh, this market will be one of the leading segments of the value added for okay. the Macedonian industry. And that is why we are always 
promoting that uh, the private sector should uh, change their main activities not to be just resellers, mm -hmm. but to provide services and to provide development. Masid is the ICD chamber, okay. which uh, has been here for a long time now. It has a um, majority of the ICD companies that are there. They're um, great partners of the government. We have uh, excellent uh, relations. And it's something that uh, we like to have this kind of partner because when we hear their problems that they have, we act upon them in order to create a better information society in Macedonia. Okay. We are a country which is a candidate country to enter the European Union and all of our laws are compatible with the European keys, meaning that uh, we are ready to enter the European Union at any given time if they will just give us the negotiation date. Yeah. So based on that, uh, we are a competitive economy that uh, any ICT company which uh, would like to work in Macedonia is more than welcome to work in Macedonia and they will be regulated under similar laws which are regulation in the European Union. Okay, and any company is welcome to, to bid on our project. We have uh, very transparent uh, legislation. We have an uh, electronic procurement system where 100% of the procurement for the government is going to be done through this system. We are one of the leaders in the world by having this system meaning that uh, you eliminate the human factor in deciding who gets the bid to the maximum with this system. And we even have a system where you can, if you can predefine the quality of the procurement that you're trying to do, everything goes on 100% with the reverse auctioning. So the cheapest gets the bid. Okay. That puts the burden on the administration to make sure that you have a quality documentation where you're not going to miss the step, where you're not going to miss the quality. But it is fine because uh, we are paid by the citizens and we've got to be careful how we spend the money. Okay. Any application that uh, we are being developed for the use of administration can be applicable on a smartphone. That is, uh, currently we have only a few applications like that, but our goal is that um, all the rest of the e-services which the government institutions will provide for the citizens will be also be available on the smartphone. That is to stimulate the private sector in Macedonia to work on this uh, exciting new adventure of uh, mobile applications. We are a very open government. We have all the legislation that the European Union requires. We have an exceptionally agile government where the bureaucracy is eliminated or it's minimized. Mm -hmm. We are the top third reformer year after year after year by the World Bank report of doing business. And we are a government that is determined to invest in the information society and to create a knowledge-based society in Macedonia.